Good morning, Gambia. Welcome to the Straight Talk, Gambia. Today, we have a very special guest, the Secretary General and Party Leader of People's Progressive Party, Honorable Papa Jai. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Buba, and it's a pleasure to be on your show. Great. You've been doing your private business and implementing a lot of youth development programs, but you've joined politics in 2018. What has sucked you in the free? Why did you join politics, Mr. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Buba. Um, you rightly mentioned that um, I was uh, doing a lot of youth work and uh, I have my own private business. Uh, but um, if you look at it, all, this, all that while I was also doing politics because I was bringing people together and uh, affecting change in their lives or giving them information that they need uh, or bettering their lives. So after the, after the, um, um, the elections in 2017, 2016 or 17, yes, um, I sat down and said, okay, now, somebody who was already hit 50 years old, um, uh, what, is it that, what is it that I have that I can give back? And um, then it was KMC, and uh, I felt that there, were, there, was, there was a need for somebody with my background and experience to go and um, look for that position so that I can make KMC better. So that really, that's where it started. Um, um, transforming from just being an activist to join a polit um, joining politics so that I can better impact uh, a larger crowd, which was then KMC. Great, but you've made a very bold step after <laughs> your race in the mayoral election. You've joined PPP, and PPP has been the biggest political party in this country until 1994 when they suffer a setback after the military took over. You've came and become the party leader of PPP. You think you can bring back the glory of PPP? Uh, PPP, the glory has never, uh, n never went away. It just it was dampened a little bit uh, because um, uh, for, over 20, for over 20 years, uh, the former uh, regime of Yajame was very smart. He knew that if he didn't ban PPP, uh, PPP would have uh, continued to dominate his politics. And um, PPP is a party. It's not just a party. It's like a, 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 a movement, an institution, organization, whereby we have to maintain it so that the legacy of the PPP as the founding, um, um, uh, founding party of the Gambia to be maintained. Coming back to me joining PPP is that um, um, all throughout the campaign, when I decided to go as an independent candidate, they were supporting me. And we had a discussion. And I said, uh, now that I'm an independent candidate, I want to get people from other, other political parties to join the bandwagon. And then once I become the mayor, and the time comes for me to decide which party to belong to, then I'll go back to PPP. Because as an independent candidate, you don't have a base. The base that you have is that convincing people from all the political parties for them to come and join and vote you. And that's what th that was very, very difficult. But um, thank God that uh, I came third. And uh, there were political parties that were there for over 20 years. And uh, I was able to amass people from all our, polit all our political uh, parties for them to vote for me. So for that, I'm really grateful for those who voted for me. And that it was really a stepping stone for me to join mainstream politics. And if you look at the time I finished, that the, uh, the time that the campaign, uh, campaign ended and the time that I decided that I was going to join PPP was almost six months. Because then I sat down and had to analyze uh, what are my options and uh, which political party that I can go to so that I can create a structure from within so that uh, my ideas, my vision will be easily implemented. And um, I felt that PPP was the right party for me. And, um, I went and I told them that uh, this is my intention, and I um, they welcomed me, welcomed me, and then I uh, bought a membership card, and then from there on it was just politics, politics, politics. Great. Your previous work has suggested that you've had a great experience working with the young people of this country. So, honourable, if you are elected today to be the president of this country, what is your plan of action for the youth? Okay. Um. I have a track record, and I know what is their problems. But I want to look at the bigger picture. The biggest problem we have in Gambia, which I tend to call it a cancer, is indiscipline. Because um, if we are not disciplined as a nation, if we are disciplined as individuals, 
if we were not disciplined as communities, if we were not disciplined as civil servants, if we were not disciplined as security officers, if we were not disciplined as a young person who wants to excel in, in his or her life, then we can move forward. So my concern really is about to talk about indiscipline. To broadly de define indiscipline is where a society does not follow, obey the norms of that country, or the best practices, or the laws of that country. That's what I call indiscipline. I'll give you an example. You would, you would be in a traffic, and the driver, the taxi driver, instead of, instead of maintaining his lane, he would take the uh, footpath. That's another form of indiscipline. Because that, once he takes that footpath, he will go up front and then want to join again. Then a private driver, a private, uh, a private, uh, driver might be there who will not allow him to join the, the lane again. And then a fight might ensue. Or there might be an accident. The indiscipline will, will further be um, uh, amplified if there's a police officer who, whose salary is $3,000 a month, who after um, um, taking $1,500 to buy a bag of rice, he has a, a balance of $1,500. He has to pay for his school fees. He has to pay for, uh, pay for the feeding. He, the police my person, police person comes and try to judicate the, the, that traffic accident or try to make sure that that doesn't happen. The person is prone to be corrupt because he's thinking about my daughter is, is sick at the home. And then this, this guy is, uh, his, his, uh, his, uh, the private driver might, might be a bit more better off than the taxi driver. And then they bribe him. So he takes the money. So are you suggesting that before going on, you have to set or <coughs> clear those societal vices in the society that affect the youth before that, actually going That on? is a process. You cannot change overnight. Coming back to the young people, we have to look at what is, what is our competitive advantage. Um, for those who are not economists, is that what are you good at? Mm -hmm. What is Gambia good at? Those are the things that we can change easily. Agriculture is here. We're good at it. Not good at it. We have it in abundance. We have the water. We have the land. We have educated young people who are willing to go into agriculture. But if you don't pro provide them with the incentives, if you don't educate them, if you don't try and um, uh, link your national vision with the education policy, with the job demand focus of your country, you fail. Uh, just that's one example of agriculture. The fisheries also here. Now that we are in an era of technology, information, communication. A lot of young people are very, very savvy with, uh, with digital technology. That's right. Why can't we invest more? And investing is not just saying, uh, okay, I want to uh, reduce uh, the employment rate from 10, from 10 to 5 percent, and then 50 uh, percent should be young people. No, no. You have to have real projects, real targets. You have to look at the education system. So, okay, I want Gambia to be, example, a financial center. Or I want Gambia for the next 5, 10 years, instead of importing 50 tons of, um, of granite or of rice, now we want to import 20 tons so that importation of rice will go down. That is your target. That is your vision. Now you go back to the ministries. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mr. X, Minister X of Agriculture, for the next five years, I want to see that the importation of rice goes down by 10% every month, every year. And it must reflect on the life of the people. Exactly. Because now what happens is that if you say, that, okay, I'm going to go to the high schools and look at the 10 best students who are interested in agriculture. You say, okay, I'm going to take you, train you, then after training, give you the incentive for you to start work. But not only that, then you go to the next level and say, okay, Gambia, we have seven, seven regions. We zonalize. I'm bringing a lot, because development is just not one focus. You have a lot of things that, that, that factor into developing a nation. Zonalizing is making sure that you divide the Gambia into a zone that you know that are, we have competitive advantage in those areas. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. In Sierra, historically, we grow a lot of rice there. Why can't we say that 
the Minister of Agriculture, maybe the, the directive has, uh, came from the President or from the National Planning Authority to say that we want to reduce the importation of rice by 10% every year. Can you go to, you go to CRR? And then say so now, any student who is in CRR and it has a, 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 a B in agriculture, the government would train you so that when you're done, you go back to CRR and start producing. Not only that, you as a government will have a mechanism to give to, to secure the farm gate, farm gate price. Farm gate price meaning that we will say anybody who grows rice in CRR, we will buy the rice at $800 or $1,000. Okay. And yeah, I, you see, I just want to explain. Yeah, yeah. And, and speak, speaking of, of CRR, yeah. uh, as we speak, the Jahali Pachari rice field is abundant. Now, we have a lot of young people, very ambitious young people in, 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 in Fuladu, who are interested in farming, but they are all later. You cannot find those people in high school to give them scholarship on agriculture. What plans do you have for those people? What do you think should be done for those people? You see, the Jahari Pachari project is a government project. Government is a, is a structure that's very inefficient. You have to involve the private sector. You have to involve the people on the ground. You have to involve the VDCs. You have to involve um, uh, um, uh, the, the NGOs within that, that community. You see, if as, as a nation we don't sit politics aside to say that, okay, this is the Gambia. This is um, North Bank, you're good in rice production and in, in, in granule production. You're good with um, uh, cross-border trading. And these are the things that we want to do. Then you link it back to the National, um, National Education uh, Program. If we want it to be a financial center, you make sure that young kids, when they are grade 12, they go into that area. But then you have a number that you're focusing on. And not only that, those people, once they finish, you have to give them incentives. And government has to also protect them. I'll give an example of the COVID-19. It has created, it had made people to be more, um, uh, more, more creative now. For the last two, three months, just before Ramadan, a lot of young people started going to far, into, into poultry production. Yeah. Because that's a, that's a need. And the good thing is that not a lot of people are able to import the poultry, uh, uh, poultry now. So that there was a demand for it. So now government, is, that's an opportunity. What do we do? We make sure that we have more people um, uh, growing more poultry. Yeah, because almost uh, the young people that I've seen in the poultry business, the agri business, yes. uh, they mostly earn their capital from the YEP project and the TKD project. Yes. But although we can give credit to the government for their partnership with this international organization, but what has government done to support agri business in this country? Young for me, it's not about what government has done, what government should do. Mm -hmm. One, we have to look at the agriculture sector, agri business sector again, reform it totally. Mm -hmm. Uh, be result oriented, um, tied to even the indirect, uh, indirect taxes. That if we know that now we have hundred um, um, or thousand um, people, who, young people who are growing, um, uh, um, uh, growing poultry, doing poultry business, then they started, they start, they've started meeting at least six percent of the demand. Then government would increase, would do indirect taxes to those importing uh, poultry. In Senegal, they did it some ten years ago. They just woke up one day and said, okay, now. No more importation of poultry. Oh, stuff. I remember some of my friends were complaining that uh, tanky chick, tank, uh, the uh, chicken leg was that expensive. Maybe the circulars. Yeah, the But, <laughs> but the, the, the Senegal has gone stuck to it. But now, most of the, chick, uh, the poultry products is produced lo uh, locally. So as a government, we have to have the will. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's why I said, um, one, we need to have the vision. Two, we have to plan nationally. It's not a plan whereby we write 50 pages, 100 pages. No, no, no. It's about targeting what you want for your country to what you want them to produce, to what, is, what you have in abundance. Once you do that, then you have a mechanism to hold people accountable. Yeah, that, that, that's right, because uh, I am an opposition to bad governance. To? Bad governance. Bad governance, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to see uh, developed Gambia. Mm -hmm. I want to see a politician who can 
tell the Gambian people that, look, I am going to turn Gambia into an economic powerhouse. And it's not about the things that you've inscribed in your manifesto or the political ideology that you subscribe your party to. Because my party is a left-wing party, right-wing party. For me, you have to do an analytical study of the problem. To your credit, you've been active in the youth, 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 youth development programs. Mm -hmm. So I believe you've done your study, you've analyzed the downward reality of these people. Yeah. So coming up with plans that will suit the realities of the people will be of great importance. And also, honorable, let's talk about the draft constitution. Draft, okay. Yeah. I have seen uh, Barrow's cabinet talking about the draft constitution. They felt that the draft constitution is a discrimination to President Barrow. Okay, I, I think... Uh, Do you have any problem with the draft constitution as far as your opposition party is concerned? No, I don't have any problem with it. So what's your reaction to... My reaction is statement? that um, it's not about... This draft, the draft constitution is not about Baro. It's not about Papanjai. It's not about anybody. It's about what is the best interest of the Gambia. Uh, it's about how do we have sets of rules to guide us to get to where we want to do, where, where we want to go. And um, as a political party, as a father, what I wanted to say in the draft constitution is one, that we go to second round voting. Mm -hmm. Two, um, I wanted to see how do they define discrimination. discrimination, not only discrimination, how do they even talk about the youth? How did, what's a, a young person? And what are the rights of a young person? You see, the draft constitution is created by people, but the biggest problem is how to implement it. That's why I spoke about um, monitoring evaluation, uh, oversight, okay? We have to make sure that once we have the draft, uh, once we have the constitution, how do we interpret it one? How does the, um, the, uh, the, the judiciary, how do they imp interpret it? Uh, the, the parliamentary, the MPs, how do they implement it? The government, what rights does the government have, and where does the rest of the government stop, the executive? Mm. And uh, once we have that document in place, then it's easy to move forward. And uh, education, civic education, education, civic education is the key. You see, if you have a good document and the population does not understand the, uh, the, 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 the constitution, mm -hmm. they will not they will not Im Im implement it. They will not hold. They will not hold us accountable. They will not even hold uh, uh, the executive accountable because they don't know the content of the um, of, of the constitution. So for me, what we need to do now is to to make it to get it passed. Okay. Once we get, once we have it uh, as a as a new as, as a new constitution, that's when we start talking about the, the various acts underneath it. That's right. And uh, also, Mr. Secretary General, we have seen the cabinet of Barrow making claims that the sweeping powers of the National Assembly should be looked at. And we, we, we have seen uh, how the Constitution has been butchered by President Jarman. The National Assembly members were merely rubber stamps. But today, the draft Constitution has given powers, oversight functions to the National Assembly. But the Cabinet is not comfortable with that. And the National Assembly mm -hmm. should, should keep the political game balanced. What do you think? I mean, yes, there's an element of truth in keeping the, um, the, 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 the game balance, the game balance uh, so that we don't give too much power to the MPs, uh, so that um, if a majority of the MPs are from a, a different uh, political party, and then if the government is the minority there, mm -hmm. then whatever they pass, they will block it. So yeah. we have to look at the balance. Okay? But I think just to make sure that it's the interest of the people, okay, the, the MPs should have power. Okay, but then um, the executive also should have an executive power and try in the constitution. I'm not a legal expert, but we should try and see a balance whereby it's not only that whatever comes to the, uh, whatever, um, uh, whatever, whoever is the majority in the parliament will decide how the government is, is run. I see that in the, um, in the US now, whereby if the Democrats control the, 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 the House, anything that the, uh, um, uh, the the Republican bring into the house, they will block it. Yeah. Okay, that's one thing. Again, it goes back to what I was telling you. In discipline, if you are uh, you are an M uh, MP, and then a, a draft comes um, uh, comes a, a bill comes to the uh, to the parliament, 
and let's say it talks about um, increasing the um, uh, the salaries of the of the uh, of the uh, of the, uh, of the ministers. Okay, and then you know that you are in power. Your, your government is in power. Instead of saying that no, we have to re uh, um, um, readjust it so that it reflects reality on the ground. But because you are you, you are an MP of the government in power, you will you will make it pass. pass it. So so that is the problem. We have to just go back and re-educate ourselves. Civic education, civic education. My brother, if we do not do that, if this cancer of indiscipline mm. is not cured, it starts from where? Primary school, nursery school. I'll give an example, and I say that, um, say this in every interview I go to. I was at Independence Stadium. Uh, they had this um, uh, inter-school um, competition. I was sitting in my car, and um, I saw the teacher giving out, I don't know, was it uh, food or the transport different? And the kids were all over him. Yeah. Why can't you tell them the, the former line? Thank you. I, I'm just from Tanger today. I went into the, into the beach side. The planning was bad. This infrastructure was poor. Drainage was poor. Okay? Even the way the, cat, the fish, fish, fish was caught from the sea, from the, um, sea and brought to the, to, the, to the place where they were selling it or even chopping was chaotic. We have to go back to the drawing board. Sit with the experts, sit with the urban planners, sit with the uh, environmentalists, because we have this problem with, um, with the Chinese people. I just want to come there. Yes, um, it's, it's crazy. Um, everybody wants to have a Chinese company, uh, uh, a fish fa factory in your, in your area so that you develop, create employment. But on, one, on, the, on the what conditions? What has the environmental um, uh, impact? What was the em environmental impact assessment? What did this talk about it? What are the implications? What are the measures that were put in the document that the, fish, the, the, the Chinese company was supposed to implement so that they don't affect our, our rivers? Was it done? And, so, and also, to, to come to that, I want to put this question to you. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the exploitation by the Chinese people yeah. in this country. We have seen a lot of their fish factories and it has caused us a lot of, um, a lot of environmental degradation, yeah. environmental destruction. Mm -hmm. But not only that, we have seen our young people, young people of this country being violated by these Chinese, Ch Ch Chinese employers. You go to Jinpex, both Chinese and Indian people are violating our, our, our young people. Just taking advantage of, the, of their joblessness because uh, these people are mostly or later, they don't even know whether they deserve a contract later for, 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 from, from their employers. These Chinese will just dismiss them anyhow. Speeding on them allegedly. I mean, I'm just going to repeat it again. If, as a nation, we are not disciplined, this is what you see. Because indiscipline brings corruption. Indiscipline brings inefficiency. Indiscipline brings laziness. Indiscipline brings a very inefficient um, uh, civil, um, uh, civil service. Mm -hmm. Because by right, I worked at Gips, a guy, a Gipsa. We, we actually started a Gypsy. Uh, my job was there to um, attract investors to come into the country, okay, to invest, because when they invest, one day will explore, exploit the, the natural, uh, our, our, our abundant resources, create employment, okay, uh, increase, um, increase full self-sufficiency, uh, increase our foreign corex um, uh, earnings. Mm -hmm. But then, it's how we do it. I don't have a problem with Chinese investor who comes in and creates employment, but do not exploit our natural resources, okay, and respect our uh, our local laws and um, customs. But because the people that they go through, I created this. Um, uh, they they they're not efficient. They are corrupt. I created this term uh, in one of my um, interviews. I call it. I call it. It's a new English word that I created. By the way, the Barabukas will know that I created. I call it the the syndrome of Nausim, the Nausim, and O double I S M. The Nausim con concept. Can you break it down? N O W I S M. Nausim concept. What does that mean? We all are thinking about now, 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 now. Legging it, legging it now. Oh. That is the, that's the problem. We do not think about tomorrow. We do not think about our next generation. We don't even think about the people that you're affecting. That Nausim concept, con uh, 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 problem, is what's also killing us. If you have that, you have the indiscipline. You have the nepotism. 
how will the civil, society, uh, civil service work? You, don't, you, not, you do not reprimand them when somebody um, offends, when somebody breaks the law. How do you reprimand them? How do you take them, take them to court? How do you dismiss them? And then it brings us to the culture of Masla. See, this indiscipline, the nausea nous, um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, problem, in this, um, uh, the, the Masla, those are the root causes. Anybody who, who wants to rule, uh, rule the Gambia, you don't have to, if you want to rule the Gambia, if you want to be a leader, it doesn't mean that you have to be the president. You can even impact from where you are. And I hope that as, the more I talk to people about this, new, this concept, we all know about it, the more people start talking about it. And I'm praying that other political parties, if they believe in what I'm, what I'm saying, let them put, them, put it in the, in the manifestos. Great. Let, let them put it there. The government, I hope they're listening to me. So they start to change the attitude. This is the problem. Good. Uh, Mr. Nye, I want us to talk about the, the COVID-19 effect yeah. on the Ghanaian people. We have seen uh, the government issuing a set of public emergency for 45 days and also 21 days set of public emergency. And it has had a lot of effect on the people of this country, our life and our livelihood. Uh, the 45 days people argue that it was not regulated, it was meaningless, the people were sitting home with, without anything to eat. So m most of the people who are the breadwinner of their family business were closed and nothing has been done for their families. And also we have seen uh, the state minister, minister of health also who went to the National Assembly and he expressed his frustration about the bad corp system of this country. So, and according to the opinion of the Ugandan people, there has been a lot of mismanagement of the state fund and a lot of things going on. So, what do you think you would have done differently? How do you think you're going to manage this corona situation? <sighs> the first thing I would have done was, I would have, um, um, okay, this is the problem with, uh, with, with you being in, uh, being in uh, government or uh, uh, being the decision maker. If you've done it too early, people will complain you've done it too early. If you've done it too late, people have done it too late. Okay, but that's why you have experts. Mm -hmm. What, one, what the thing that would have done, the, uh, would have, they should have done, if I was in power, I would have made sure that I did it early. The day I heard that Senegal has one or two cases, I would go and close my border immediately. I would have also, within that one week, called all political parties, all religious leaders, all experts, to say that politics aside. Let's come and see how to resolve this. Put our heads together. Yes. You know, religious leaders, they have a big following. If they, if they believe in, in the COVID-19 and they, they wanted to impact, they would, they, they would have just gone to the community and said, listen, I believe in it and this is what we need to do. We use them. We use, the, we use the youth leaders. But... Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I think he, uh, the president tried um, by, uh, during, in one of his um, statements, he did ask for people to come and join, and to come and uh, let's work together and help. But um, we are at a stage where in the Gambia that uh, we're, by, we're too polarized in our beliefs, in our political parties. We needed him to physically even take the telephone call and call him and say, listen, this is what I want to do. And I want, I want to invite you guys to come to, uh, to the state house or wherever, so that we work on it. One, two, you see, if communication is not transparent, it's not timely, it's not accurate, that's why people start giving here's the information. That's, that's why people start misinforming, circulating. circulating. So that information flow should be transparent should be accessible. That's right. That information should be on the website or should be easily accessible. Go somewhere and get it. So if we had done that, then uh, all this misinformation, all this all this mis, uh, mis, mis, uh, people saying all these things would have, would, would have at least gone down a little bit. I'm saying that also, no single government is perfect. Whatever you do, if someone does not, does not believe in it, they will always come up 
with excuses, but don't give them the, the chance. But do by you, giving, do, do you think we should take an excuse for the government during no, the no, pandemic? No, no, no. I, I'm not saying the government what what they've done is right or wrong. Okay, I only talk on things that I have physical evidence of it. Okay, I only talk about what things I think government should should have um, added more. Okay, and um, if you follow my Facebook page, I one day I went to the I, I was going past the market. I saw there was no there was no social distancing. People don't believe in it. It's not regulated. No, it's not about regulated. Everybody, everybody knows that that's COVID nineteen. Every single person in the game knows that that's a threat because Senegal has it. Because they go on social media, they see other countries people dying. It's not about them not knowing that it's, it's there. It's the unwillingness for them to accept it. One maybe is because of politics. Two, maybe because they don't just they don't want to believe in it. Or three, maybe because um, they have to go out and feed themselves. That is true. They should go out. But then, if you're going out, wear the mask. Mm -hmm. Wear the mask. Go and do whatever you do and come back. So to me, I said, um, my phrase was, um, uh, um, COVID-19, what COVID-19? Social distancing, what social distancing? It's not there. So as much as we're blaming government, which is which some, to some extent is the way the information was spread, but also us as individuals, we shall take it upon ourselves to make sure that we wear, we wear the, 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 the mask when we go out, we come back. Good, and moving forward, uh, Mr. Secretary General, we know for a fact that uh, women participation in politics is, uh, is, is a great tool in mm -hmm. strengthening our democracy. And we have seen some political parties who make attempts to say, at least we are going to introduce quota system in our political party. I said thirty percent of the executive of our party will be women. What plans do you have for, for, I, I, for women? I, we actually am um, uh, in the process of uh, revising our constitution, and um, uh, we'll make sure that uh, the women folk uh, they have um, a, 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 a bigger share of uh, of. Um, of positions, we already uh, fifty percent, uh, forty percent of uh, people in our executive are, are, are women, uh, but um, we have to be more af uh, affirmative in the, in making sure that they are better represented because they are more than us. Um, it's not only you see the problem with empowering women is not only saying it or just giving them positions. It's about from primary from nursing school telling that young girl. That, that young girl, that you have the right to explore, to develop, to be ambitious in life. But from there, you're told that ah, this is a, a woman, this is a boy's game, so you're not supposed to play it. Okay? You go to primary school. No, 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 no. Um, a, a man should not do cookery. Cookery, home economics, should be done by women mainly. Okay, and then they, once they get to grade, um, grade 11, 12, that's when we have a problem, societal. Now this, she's 18, somebody wants to marry her. Uh, okay, let, let her just go and marry. So already killing that la lady's um, future. So it's about our attitudes. It's about making sure that from the foundation, you tell them that what a man can do, a woman can do. Can do. Empowerment. Th that that's it. It's not about, because sometimes, even if the constitution says that we each political party must make sure that thirty percent of their women are, are, are when the, during the MPL, uh, mayor, mayor, uh, MP election, thirty percent of the people that stand should be women. If those women are empowered, or they don't, they are not able to come out and talk about the agenda, or they, they don't have the confidence, mm -hmm. no, nobody wants to lose. So you will go to maybe to my village, Julangel, okay, and then we want to put a woman candidate there. We might have a problem. Because we don't have an empowered young lady who maybe was a youth leader or who was the, uh, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the prefect of the, of the school who has gone into politics for us to take that person and groom that person. No, it's not there. So we have to make sure that from the Nazareth no school, we say that women are also empowered. Great. So, Mr. Nye, how would you assess President Barros' three years in office? Um, I think he has done some good things. And, but um, what I just want to tell people is that no single leader will complete all what he wants to do or she wants to do. That's right. The vision. What you need to do as a president, 
you have the development at uh, the uh, NDP and the plan. plan. I read it, it was too, it was too open, it was too vague. If I were to advise Baron now, I would say, okay, out of the development plan, what it is I'm con concerned about that I want to develop. For me, I'm very passionate about agriculture. I'm very passionate about um, uh, IT. IT. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you, you put most of your effort and say, okay, man, me, Baron, for the next three years or next five years, I want to concentrate in these areas. Because I think if we do that, then A, B, C, D will, 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 will get the, those benefits out of it. Okay, so I've not seen that. I've seen him um, do a, ro a lot of road um, uh, building, which is good. Uh, I've seen him um, doing a lot of projects, which is good. But as, as a politician, what I want him to um, uh, also do is that get other political parties involved. I mean, if you, as a politician, you believe that I'm here to develop Gambia, so if the government calls you, say, listen, hey, listen, let's come and walk. We can have a council of advisors somewhere. Or I can give you a, a, a position whereby you will also contribute. But if they call me today and say, Papa, come and head an institution, which I think I can do, and I say no, that means that I don't have the interest of the country. Okay. I so, have my personal interest. So to sum up. To sum uh, up. Yeah, will, will you, uh, how percent, what percent are you going to give up? Um, I fluctuated. In the past, I gave him 40%, uh, then I went up to 50 60%. For now, I'll give him 70%. Great. So tell us your agenda for 2021 before we leave. My agenda for 2021 is to, um, um, which I've started, to strengthen my structure uh, at the base uh, so that um, uh, when we come to, uh, come to 2021, uh, we'll be ready to partner with any political party that have our own agenda. Uh, because I think uh, no single party is going to win. And um, we also want to make sure that um, our voters are educated. Um, um, let them know what's constitution, what the new constitution says. We want them to be empowered to make decisions. I don't think um, it's only good enough for you to be a psycho fan because uh, Papa is PPP. So uh, even if he come, comes up with a, with a bad manifesto, I'm going to support him. No. But Mr. Nye, we have 18 months away from the 2021 election, yeah. and this is not going to be a horse's race. Yes. And the citizens are interested in what politicians have, what plan and policy. Okay, yeah, have. I mean, so I, can, I, I can take two minutes and talk about it. No, no, what, what I'm saying is yeah. now, do you think uh, you can leave uh, the civic education part to the NCCE and focus on your plans for the people? No, what I will, think? we can do both. Um, my plans for, for the government is, um, I don't have enough time to, to talk about it, but agriculture is a priority to me. Um, um, technology, infra, infra, uh, communication technology is important because if you want to do e-governance, if you want to hold the government uh, the, the civil service accountable, you have to have a system whereby you can easily track them. The civil service is important to me. Okay, and then uh, the rest follow, follow through. Education is important. The education, we have to reform it so that it, it reflects the reality of what I want to do or what we want to see in Gambia. I mean, why would I spend a lot of money on on, 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 um, on uh, in, invent, inventing new technologies, whereby I know that um, the, the technology is somewhere else, and that I know it's not, it's not my competitive advantage. My competitive ad advantage is the things that I'm good at, the things that I have on the ground. That's the agriculture, that's the, um, uh, the, the fisheries, that is the um, um, making sure that those things that we have on the ground, we use it, the river transportation. So for me, really, it's about looking at things that we're good at. But then, as we develop, I'm going to look at the tax, taxation. How do you bring the taxation down and broaden it? At least to give it breathing space yes. to the yeah, no, 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 sector. Yes, bring it down, broaden it, but then get more people to pay tax. Educate them what is the importance of tax. But then enforce, enforcement. If I bring the tax down and you know that you can afford it, you, don't, you do not pay, I'll take it, I'll take it to court. Or we we'll have a system whereby it's digitalized in such a way that every single government should have a unique number. We have the TIN number, yes. But it should be digitalized and put in a system whereby if, I, if, you, are, if you do a traffic offense and the police stops you and do a, a, a tag on your, on your vehicle, they'll know that you, you did a traffic offense some two months ago and you did not, did not pay. 
automatically they will find you or they will send you to for you to go um, go and uh, go and uh, answer to the judge. But that is a technology, 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 technology. I got it. Civic education. How, how how could you forget the work that you're most passionate about that we have known you for? What you you work? You've not mentioned. Ah, you work. No, but no. We know it is written all over your face. You work. I'm passionate about it. So. Sports, entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, if we invest a little bit in entertainment. Entertainment talking. We're talking about uh, the artists. You know, artists. You know, it's only business that within within three hours you can become a millionaire. An artist. We have to inv invest in what you guys are doing. We invest in in, in creating um, uh, a, a, a dream um, uh, a movie studio somewhere. Okay. So that is there. But it's uh, because we don't have enough time. I cannot yeah. talk about all these things. But my yeah. heart is with the young people. My heart is with technology. My heart is with transparency. And the Nausin concept. You got that Nausin concept. Yes. Take your time and develop yourself, yeah. young people. Yeah. And to all our viewers, try and follow all the political parties on their campaign tour and see what they've got for us. Thank you for coming by, Mr. Njai. No, no, COVID 19. Thank you. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs>